Welcome back, everyone. A lot is happening in a door state ahead of the September governorship election. Uh, and in the last few days, the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has declined to nullify the primary election that produced Aswe Godalo as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the impending governorship election in the state. The court rather went ahead and awarded a cost of one million naira against the appellant and in favor of the respondent in the matter. And this means that Aswe Godalo is the candidate of the PDP as we speak. Meanwhile, in another development, the Edo State Police Commissioner of Police, Funsho Adeboye, has vowed to declare persons it invited over the killing of a police officer in Benin City last week wanted if they do not show up. Uh, sadly, a police officer was killed in the state capital on Thursday. Also, reinstated Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shaibu, danced the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and returned to the All Progressives Congress, APC. Shaibu made the announcement on Saturday in Benin City, the state capital. He was said to have rejoined the APC with leading members of the Dan Orbin led legacy group of the PDP. Meanwhile, the leadership of the Ado State chapter of the All Progressives Congress has called on the State House of Assembly to immediately commence impeachment proceedings against the Governor of Baseki over his alleged threat to burn down the country. Also, Senator Monde Okwebele, the All Progressives Congress governorship candidate for the 2024 Edo State election, is facing fresh allegations of aid falsification. A lot to unpack tonight. So let's start by speaking with Kasima Febwa, APC Chieftain and Political Affairs Analyst of Philip Shabu's defection to the APC and preparations ahead of the poll. Good evening to you, Mr. Febwa. It's always a pleasure having you on politics tonight. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening for having me. Right, so... I mean, first, uh, Philip Shaibu is officially back home. And for those who were confused about where he stood, it's now very clear. Uh, not also forgetting that his political father had said APC is not for internally displaced politicians. So I'm wondering the kind of conversations that must have happened for Shiomale to have accepted him, how easy or difficult it must have been for APC to receive back someone who had only said, I don't know the Lagos, Mr. Febwa. Well, thank you very much. That is the nature of politics. Mm. And uh, essentially, the constitution of Nigeria, every Nigerian has the right of uh, association, right of assembly, and you also have the right to join any political party of your choice. Uh, you, No one can stop you from doing that, but you are bound to subsume yourself within the rules and regulations of the party once you become a member. Mm -hmm. And so, if uh, Philip Chavo has decided to come back, come back home, his initial party uh, is a welcome development. We we are we are in election fever, election season. We need all the centripetal and the centrifugal forces to combine forces and energy to be able to defeat the choice of the incumbent governor who has. Uh, Bismarck, you know, uh, you know, underperform in the state. So, uh, as a, as a Nigeria of voting age, you are bound. You are free to join any party of your choice. So the APC has been magnanimous. It, it, it kept its flanks open to any Nigerian, particularly in the state. Now you are free to come. You are free to participate, but you must live within the rules and regulations of the party so as to be able to, you know, exhibit uh, civilized conduct in the course of your membership. Mm. Uh, but Mr. Fekwa, do you doubt his genuineness uh, and loyalty, considering how much has been said, how much has been done in the last four years while he was in good terms with Governor Basaki? And, I mean, some say uh, there's every tendency that he's back because he thinks the APC will win and may return if APC loses. Uh, well, I think you should you should know the political temperature of the PDP in the state as it were now. The temperature that has reached a boiling point, boiling point such that the party has about three or four factions, and so the Philip Shabu faction is one of it. The Janobi legacy group is another. The Bobasaki faction is one of it, and uh, one other faction, a new PDP, a new PDP faction. So in such a situation, is uh, political players will naturally find their bearing based on the the reality sound. So for a Philip Shuaibo who 
try to contest for governorship under the PDP, uh, and for whom uh, Governor Basaki took up arms against in terms of frustrated effort, he would naturally, as a political animal, as a political player, find a place that to at least somehow accommodate him so that he can also exhibit his own uh, political preferences. And uh, just like I said earlier, it's difficult for you to stop anyone from, you know, pursuing any aspiration. Uh, what Opaseki did was like try to breathe down his throat so that he would not be able to come out uh, con to contest the governorship. Mm. And they fought to a point that he felt that he couldn't tolerate that, uh, uh, you know, anymore. So when he came to the APC, of course, there are conversations. There have been meetings with uh, Comrade Adams or Shomoli and all of that. Even to some, with some of us who had very strong position and you know resistance in terms of allowing Philip to come on board. But in politics, the more the merrier. You know, no one, no one is perfect. Mm. He has learned his lessons. He has uh, shown sign of penitence. He has also know that. Uh, Politics is like a cyclical game. One one door uh, one door in, another door out. So, I think uh, coming back now, you know, second time and uh, with the kind of situation scenario. And the people and the PDP thinks, Mr. Fegwa, the PDP thinks there is nothing to celebrate here. I mean, uh, they say it's good readings for a man who has consistently lost his unit and word and cannot be described as a classic um, politician. Um, so really, we, what's we the for me, I don't really care about what the, what the PDP will say because you don't expect them to celebrate him. But he was coming to the state. You, re, you remember what happened on on, on, on on Thursday last week? How how the seven thugs to attack him? If it, if it was good uh, good readers to bad rubbish, why did they send their thugs to come out to go and attack him at the airport? So it's it's convenient for them to do that because uh, they feel oh. We have lost the big figure that you like it or not. Being a deputy governor, it must have been good to some people. It must have been good to certain persons. Even if he's drinking on board his boat and that of his wife, it's enough for mm -hmm. us. There are scenarios where two, two votes can make a difference. So we, we, we keep our flanks open. We are going to work together. He has already started campaigning going out. Today he was in Aruchi, where the women of APC were doing an empowerment program and all that. So it's it's good news for us. Uh, we will we will tolerate all shades of opinion, all, all manners of persons, because the overall interest of the party is for us to defeat the uh, PDP mm -hmm. in the state that is presently factionalized, that is quarrelsome, that is compacted. And you had the governor telling telling his member that he was going to burn down Nigeria. Right. If, uh, we'll uh, get to that in a minute, Mr. Fegwa. We'll get to that yeah, in a minute, right. but w would you say that um, Edo State presently has two deputy governors? Because, you know, last Thursday I had a conversation with uh, the spokesperson of the PDP Campaign Council who says, uh, Omobayo Godwin is the deputy governor of Edo State. He says Philip Schreiber should have waited because the Federal High Court was a court of first instance. And having found a, an appeal and a stay of execution, he should not have resorted to self-help. Does this mean that those states now have two deputy governors? And I'm also wondering the impact of this on governors in those states and the people. Uh, 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 on point of law, point of law, and this is, we are, we are looking at a scenario that this country is the same country. On point of law, we only have one deputy governor. And that one deputy governor is Philip Shoyani. And uh, people must understand the rudiments of law as, as it relates to stay of execution or whatever. The judgment that Philip Shabu uh, got from the Federal High Court is a judgment. It's not the usual judgment you get and all that. That's why the court immediately it should be returned because there was no vacancy had been issued. There are about 10 orders, or the one or the two or the three that were granted and all that. And the, the court directed the Inspector General of Police to immediately reinstate him. If the governor now wants to breathe down his throat by visiting his whims and caprices on him, by twisting the law upside down and thinking that because he's governor, he's a demigod, that's a different matter altogether. But on point of law, 
and this is a same society, and democracy relies so heavily on rule of law, due process. And so you cannot file an application for stay of execution that has not been granted, and you allow the judgment to be festering without being attended to. So the, the, you have filed a stay of execution, you have filed your appeal, but there has not been judgment because it's a declarative judgment. It is bound to be executed almost immediately. The implications of this, that is why, uh, that was why they, they were the, the airport to try to frustrate him from coming into the state, uh, use their thugs and all what have you, uh, to, cause, to just cause destruction. And so if, uh, if Obadati says, uh, Omobaya is the deputy governor. Whatever Omobaya does from the day that Philip Shabu was reinstated up to their exit date, if he collects a couple, it will be refunded to it. If he expends anything that concerns the state government, because as far as we are concerned, he's no longer a public officer in the in the status of a deputy governor. The deputy governor is Philip Shabu, and that must be respected because that is the position of law. The verdict of the court or the Federal High Court of Law, I mean, Federal High Court Abuja, must be respected because the court stated in there that there was no vacancy ab in issue. So the idea of saying that he was, he, that they was pushing him away by a, a spurious in, impeachment process does not exist. So when 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 governors have you know uh, have had so much powers to themselves, the likelihood that they will misbehave is very is very mm. obvious. So for Edo now, from point of law, the Shabu is the government. But from the point of the of Basaki People's Party, OPP, is a mobile. Mm. And I'm, I mean, I'm wondering how Edo people uh, received this news and um, the impact of these on governance in the state. But let's go back uh, to the... In terms, in, terms of, in terms of the impact on governance, the, 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 the governor of Edo put us, we Edo Collective, in a very bad light to the global audience. It's quite, it's quite disturbing. And this is my quarrel with people who claim to be technocrats. When they find themselves in, a position, in positions of power, they exhibit excess power to the point that they, they become conquistadors. And they will dictate and become democratic dictators and, you know, display manners of tyrannical conduct. Because whether you like it or not, this is a distraction completely. If they, if, they, if they respect the position of the law as a public officer in the status of a governor, you must swallow your pain, swallow your anger and all that, so that the collective interest and destiny of the people can be charted on a path that will lead, lead to growth and development. We need to, we need to deepen conversation around governance both at the local government level and at the state level. And a situation where loyalties are, are, are shared, you know, amongst all the political players, you don't know which is which and all of that, it becomes a problem because in Edo to today, rather than devote time to deliver on governance, Masaki is busy chasing his imaginary enemies. Mm. He's quarreling with the Oba Bini, he's quarreling with everybody, he's quarreling with Danopi, he's quarreling with this, he's quarreling with that. For God's sake, a, a state as homogeneous as Edo, all we need to do is a rallying point that can galvanize all the factors of production for us to deliver on governance. But the reverse is the case, and that is why we are praying fervently and we are going to mobilize you know, Edo electorates to ensure that he does not say true with his anointed uh, godson. Mm -hmm. We are going to frustrate that process by keeping vigil on everything they intend to do. We are, we are, we are monitoring them. We have information. We just pray that when we pass those information to the appropriate quarters, they will take measures that will mitigate, you know, uh, such problems mm. in record time. All right. Now going back to the day uh, Philip Shaibu got back uh, into Benin City, sadly, a police officer, a police officer died. And the government and Philip Shaibu are currently trading blames over the shooting. And PDP claims Philip Shaibu came with the dogs to wait for him. Uh, Philip Shaibu says Edo Vigilante Network is responsible for that shooting. And some Nigerians have said, I mean, across the country, this is a vivid example of how far state-sponsored extrajudicial killings have been going on, but are covered by the state government with deceptive reports of intercult fights in the state. Uh, what is APC saying? You see, uh, may the soul of uh, Inspector Onu Akko rest in perfect peace. 
the candidate has gone to Abuja to meet with his family, with his family, the wife and uh, And we have since uh, also gone to the hospital to, you know, see those who were... Mm. So, Fagbo, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, the please go point, ahead. The, the point is, yes, the point is, the the, 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 the government, the state-sponsored extrajudicial killing, like you said, was what happened in this in this uh, uh, airport road shooting of Thursday. Because the the, 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 the deputy governor that was restated flew into a, uh, Benin, with uh, the governorship candidate of the APC. On arrival, we met the commissioner of police at the VIP lounge, the protocol lounge of the airport. And uh, the, seeing the commissioner of police, they thought that, okay, he had come up with a given instruction to, to welcome uh, Felipe Shoaibu uh, so that they can take him with the court bailiff to go and uh, restate him. But uh, it was a different thing altogether. One or two of our members observed that there were some kind of unusual movements at the exit gate of the airport. There was a vehicle, Siena vehicle, that was parked around there with uh, the sticker of Asha Igodalu on his plate number. There was a power bike that was also parked across the across the exit gate uh, uh, road. And so, by the time they saw the commissioner of police, they were relaxed, thinking that, okay, this man has come to give us, uh, to perform the necessary function to take us to, to the government house so that he can resume his office and all that. Now, even when the commissioner of police was told that they were unusual movement, he ignored that, that report. He ignored it. Mm -hmm. And when he was out of the airport, he, he, he went out through the en 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 entrance gate. Which is an abnormality. Mr. Fegwa, you know what, so what you know, we cannot uh, totally take your words for it. I mean, when you say the commissioner of police ignored it, you have to give us proof. Do you have video evidence no, to uh, this let effect? Me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. You know why I said he ignored. A, a, a chief security officer of the status of a commissioner of police, when you are being told that sin of that such nature is, is, is going to happen, or they are seeing some unusual movement, you will put your men and bring them down, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to the spot. You can check, you can throw, you can even do any other thing. You can make even instant arrest there. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the state uh, headquarters of Nigerian police in Benin is just three minutes drive to the airport. So it's not, it's not a distance that you can say, oh, before his men came to the spot, uh, something had happened. He will have he, uh, called, called, called for more men, and so that they can mitigate that crisis. He didn't do that. He left it the same. He abandoned Philip Sherbourne and our candidate at the airport and for them to face the consequences of uh, the, the thugs. And so when they were coming out, they, was, uh, they, 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 they were attacked. And I've been listening to all of of very funny, uh, what do you call, funny, uh, funny, fu fu funny conclusions being drawn by agents of PDP and, the, and even the government, saying that, uh, Philip Shabu is known for this, he's known for that, and so because of that, they were the one who, who shot at the police. And also, Mr. 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 Begwa, I, I, I said that because there are also reports that uh, the police command also spoke with uh, Philip Shabu so as to have uh, some level of synchronization when it comes to his movements, but he also uh, ignored. What is, when has, when has democracy become uh, a game where your movements are, are, are charted? When has democracy become such? So you want to you want to uh, limit his movement he, he, as a free born of a two, you are going to prevent him from going to his house? Mm -hmm. Or what? What is the meaning of that? What kind of advice is that? I think very strongly that the commissioner of police was compromised. Oh, so so if you say this, how... And even in our petition, in our petition, we have also indicated that he was complicit in the entire uh, process. Because right. you can't even have a, a breakdown of law and order of such magnitude, and the police were not on ground mm -hmm. to, 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 to arrest the situation. So, so since it looks like you do not trust, Mr. Febwa, kindly hold on. Since it looks like you do not trust the commissioner of police, how do you charge the IG on this particular issue? Well, we have written up to the IG. We have uh, stated our demands. We have provided names of persons that were seen 
at the at the at the at the scene of of that incident, shooting guns and all of that. Our people were 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 were, were not confrontational; they were jubilating. Uh, some our governorship candidate was happy that he was coming to join us in our meetings at the at the campaign at the party office. All of a sudden, we started hearing that. Uh, they, they blocked him and his gunshots were, was ongoing. He actually missed being killed by whiskers because the man who died has been his aide for about 12 years. So mm -hmm. if they had shot him, that would have fulfilled their aspiration to cut him this, uh, of, of this governorship contest. And so uh, it is convenient for people to twist the narrative. It is convenient for the government of the day to begin to run commentaries that he won't stand logic on his head. But for God's sake, a man who has won election in the court, in the federal high court, and who was to be reinstated, will naturally have people who come and celebrate with him and jubilate with him and all of that. So mm -hmm. he cannot be shooting himself and shooting his own aides and be killing his aides and all of that. So that's why we, we, we find a lot of the positions taken by government and even by police very curious. Uh, people have been telling us, oh, no, they, let them do the investigation. Up till now, from Thursday till now, they have not made arrest. The CP has vowed to, to declare, declare them wanted. So uh, let's wait yeah, for... These are, these are individuals, they know they are homes. We have provided numbers, telephone numbers, names and everything. They want to know, my God. I don't know how to... Mm. But, but, but let's wait well, Let's wait for the outcome of that, of that investigation. But do you agree they because... Members, they are members of the Edo State Security Network. That, mm. that body should be banned. Okay. You can't be grooming. You can't be grooming a body that is made up of thugs and all that. That you give them uh, compassion, AK uh, for seven, all of that. Say in the name of security. Meanwhile, it does still still remain porous. Kidnapping is still going on every time here and there and all that. You are not facing that. You tell you are running an Edo security network. You want to use it to rig election. And I had the governor already challenging challenging the system even that he was going to he was going to uh, burn Nigeria if anything happens uh, at the election and all of that. All right, and I want to Mr. Fegwa, uh, let's take a break. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we will continue with, with this conversation. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for staying with us. Tonight, we're discussing Philip Shabu's defection to the All Progressives Congress and preparations ahead of the upcoming Edo governorship election. And I guess tonight is Kasima Fegwa, APC Chief Team, uh, Political Affairs Analyst. Mr. Fegwa, thanks a lot for staying with us on the program. So, uh, let's continue from where we stopped before we went on break, because I see that you're very eager to talk to me about how you feel about that statement. Governor Basaki has promised to burn down Nigeria if the perpetrators of the shooting are not arrested. How do you describe such statements coming from a sitting governor? It is, it is, it, it is the height of press irresponsibility on the part of the governor. You see, when they said someone is an executive governor of the state, there are certain utterances that he or she should never attempt to alter, particularly in a fragile society that has become so uh, bedeviled with all manners of uh, agitations, protestations, and uh, insecurity. Now, at the level of that provocation, I expect that a governor who, who, who knows who owns, speak in a temperate manner to calm frayed nerves. They have not, as we speak, on door with the family of the police that they killed. They killed him. They have not condoled condo with, with the family. Secondly, they are now saying that they are also petitioning that Philip Shabu should be arrested. A man who is jubilating with celebrity is the one who, who was now shooting himself, after his own aid or his, uh, the aids on his convoy. So it flies in the face of logic. But governors, when they do certain things, rather than that to face the consequence of it, they will be shifting blame and trying to rake up mods just to score a cheap political point. If you want to burn down Nigeria, 1,000 of Gordon Obasanjo cannot burn down Nigeria. I promise you that. I'm a free born of this country. We are all free born country. We don't require a visa to live in our country. I'm from Edo State. I'm from Opola to be precise. My free born family. I don't see how a governor of this thing that he can, he can force himself on the people. They have, the respect for that office must be earned. A governor that has been quarreling with everybody and has been so compactive, fighting with everybody. The power is fighting with them. He's a man of Kaibele. He says he's fighting courtesy. Yet people in his government are, men, are, are courtists. He has not done that. So when, when you make such statement, are you pouring cold water on crisis or 
to, to ignite another crisis because of your selfish motive to play the role of a godfather to an anointed godson. Mm. Is that what you are trying to what you are telling us? Must you produce a successor? If we say collectively as a, as voters that we, you can't produce a successor, even if you are frustrated to the point that your <laughs> excuse me to the point that your your, your candidate is now is, is now receiving low, low low turnout in terms of support, there has to be a way to cultivate your path. Right. So, so Mr. Fegwa, making uh, such. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Would you agree with me that evidently this speaks to the way? Our political leaders across uh, political parties see violence as part of electoral normalcy, especially as we speak in a dual state. If a sitting governor can utter such statements, don't you think so? Well, well, I am I am from a very noble family. Uh, I don't cultivate violence. I I pray all the time to God to grant me good life so that I can live as an example to my children. And any time I try to do anything, I first and foremost, you know, weigh the consequences. I've never cheated with violence. Even when the police declared me wanted in 2018 because I issued a statement on behalf of General Mabangida, former president, I submitted my to police. I didn't wait. I put a fugitive to the law. So, once you know your background and you know where you are coming from and you know your conduct is within the the, 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 the sound the sound etiquette and morality of society, you don't have anything to fear. You see, when a governor issues such a statement, is it trying to help the insecurity situation or security situation? It's only it's only working and trying to give vent to the activities of his thugs and hooligans whom he has recruited into a do, a do security network. And he feels that, oh, that is the only way he can, that language he will understand for them to know that he's standing by him. And again, I want to tell him, the governors have limitations. They don't control Nigerian police. They don't control Nigerian army. So he should know that he's like an ordinary citizen like, like us, but because of the office he occupies, the police and all that are bound to give him protection. And by the time you are making this kind of statement, you are also going to be igniting passion, passion that can be inflamed in a manner that to make the state ungovernable for him. So, is that what he wants? So if this is happening now, down, do you, you worry about state police? Interest. I worry, I said it this yesterday, when we were having a discussion, analyzing the scenario with that statement. I worry about police and I pray that state police should not come now. Because it's going to be a tool in the hands of governors who are excessively overpossessed with, you know, uh, uh, absolute powers. Let me put it that way. Because you have not, you have not had the opportunity of state police. You have only set up a uh, security network and public work volunteers. And we are seeing this kind of showmanship, this kind of display, this kind of hostility. So your own citizens, mm. your own indigenous citizens of a door. You are, you are being hostile to them. You don't have any respect, any atom of respect for the monarchy, the Benin monarchy that survived a terrible invasion. And all, all you can preach, violence, and say you are going to burn down Nigeria. I want to promise him that he cannot burn down even government house. Because if he burns it down, he will face the consequences of his action. Mm. November level of Baseki, whether he likes it or not, Governor Baseki will leave Edo State as governor. What that? Right. So November is left by the governor, and September 21 will be a referendum of Edo people. Yes. Chase him out of that place, and he will have let go soon. Hmm. I, I know we've had this discussion before now, because, so let me bring it back again, because some stakeholders have begun to highlight the importance of a level playing field ahead of this election. So again, I, I, how worried are you? If I have if I have a means to make the 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 the, 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 the ground on level in our favor, I will, I will support it just to chase out the teachers of these uh, Lagos cowboys coming to feast on Edo. We want homegrown group politicians who understand our problems. Edo is rotten now; it's decayed. There's infrastructural decay. Abysmally. Last last year, no, 2023, Edo got 122 billion from federal federal location. Come to Edo and tell me what they have done with that money in one year. Everywhere it rained this 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 morning. Every everywhere is flooding. 
I, I, I drove around uh, Benin City this, uh, this afternoon. It's potholes versus potholes everywhere. The, the only roads you will see are the ones that were done by Adam Sosomoli with street lightings. Dawson Street is there, Siloko Road is there, uh, TV Road is there, Camp Junction is there, the extension to Ubawa and all of that. Sapale Road is there. Those are the good roads you can talk about. The others have, have flooded potholes everywhere, everywhere. And you can't you can't fix all these rules. All you do is to is to funnel funnel your own uh, aspiration and bring your business friends, portfolio managers to come and stay in Port Portia Hotel dealing with our collective patrimony. We are going to say never again. Come September twenty first, we are mobilizing the people to vote out this this uh, the, the, this governor. Of course, he's going to go out. Uh, the, his anointed son, and so that we can have some respite. We want people who understand who are having party like our candidate. Who has emotional intelligence? Who is humble? Who, 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 who is not quarrelsome? Somebody mm -hmm. who can rally us round and so that we can we can channel all our destinies together to make a headway in terms of development and growth of our state. And our state is in the news for the wrong reason. Edo people by the world. They are all over the world. Very brilliant people, very articulate people, and all of that. We just have a governor who is so quarrelsome, who is so combative, fighting, intimidating everybody. If you talk too much, they will go and demolish your house. If you make too much, they go and seize your land. The Julius Ewing was a victim. The, the, the former deputy governor, the Paris Odubu, was a victim. Uh, Victor Ekato was a victim. Even people who were appointed, you, you, you made sure that they were, they were removed from their positions. In any, so, Mr. Febwa, talking, about your, talking about your candidates, mm, talking Sorry? about your candidates, Mr. Febwa, I'm sure you're not hearing this for the first time, uh, but your candidate is facing fresh allegation of four age falsification. So, what is the date of birth of Senator Monde or Pueblo? I won't, I won't even suggest this one to television discussion. The, the procedure is here. When when I say good that forge, uh, when we when we allege that he forged uh, uh, voters voters card and the one he attached to his uh, from EC, we, they, they took him up. He's in court and uh, there was a body today that said that yes, got a case to answer. So uh, technically, yes, yeah, so Igodalo is actually not the candidate of the PDP now. So if they are having quarrels with uh, age and all of that, let them go to court. I'm not going to be discussing frivolities, you know, in the name of in the name of trying to distract us. No, we are very focused in this election to beat them hands down. Mm. So what you're saying now is that your candidate did not falsify his age. My dear sister, I am not even going to discuss anything here. Let him be say falsify. Let them go to court. Court mm. is a good place for you to be to interrogate issues of age and. Whether for education or otherwise, when when we saw that as, as well for his uh, voters card, they took him to court. The court has given verdict. Court of appeal today gave verdict on one. And by that uh, by that even by the outcome of that verdict, he's not even a candidate now. Maybe he will be tell us that he's waiting for Supreme Court verdict. Okay. So we are going to is the uh, APC APC versus Labour Party as far as I'm concerned. All right. So so talk to us about uh, the reputation of APC in a uh, door states, because I mean, for a fact, no administration will uh, is perfect or will be perfect. Why do people say Gordon Obaseki increased the IGR of the states by over 100 percent? And at the moment, Edo is one of the top three states with good WIC results. And for them, these are the issues. <laughs> Mr. Febwa, well, please know, react to that. The chief, the chief propagandist in Edo, Ahmed Bubuzelas. They are very smart at doing that. Edo, Edo IGR was already over two billion when the Shomole was there. If you are going into four billion, that's good for us. But the bad news is that we are not seeing the money being spent on it, and allocation has increased since. President Tinubu came on board. It is convenient for them to insult Tide because he's a, he's a APC, APC uh, he belongs to the APC. But each time he gives palliative to them, they crap. And you don't see what they do with the palliative. He gave 10 billion at one time to states, and do collect his own, it entered voicemail. 7 billion, another one for security support, they collected, entered voicemail. 105 billion federal allocation. Just the one they shared last week is a 1.3 trillion, the first thing in the history of Nigeria. So when they get all of this money, when you ask questions, everything is done in secrecy. You don't see bidding for projects, how they, how they are being done. They tell you that they are running an open government, but you go to their sites, you, you will not see the process of bidding. 
So everything is done in secrecy. Uh, the roads are bad. You have not finished fixing state roads. You are quarreling about the federal road. But when Adam Sosomole fixed the federal road in, in Benin and elsewhere, the federal government refunded a $10.3 billion, and Obafeki was the beneficiary. What did he do with that? So each time they say, come and fix this road, with the major artery between Benin and Puma Auchi, Auchi Road. He said, oh, no, he went and put signboard. He said, it's a federal road. Uh, is that road going to be applied by, by, federal, by federal citizens? I will not do people. Don't, I will not do going to, uh, passing through it. And he has an advisor in the candidate who says he's economic advisor. Economic advisor, but once you don't have roads in any state, mm. the economic activities will be grounded. And even the time you waste on roads, bad roads, before you can get to your point of doing business, it also impacts on the outcome of your economic undertakings and activities. And so, when you, once you have economic predators and buccaneers like Obasaki have brought into the state, what you get is you're all, all about profit and loss. Governance is not profit and loss. Governance is to render service to people, create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, and in the process, help people to pursue their legitimate aspirations without let of interest. But the reverse is the case in Edo State, as we speak. And I've challenged them time and time again. When they tell me, oh, Basaki is finishing well, I say, please tell me. Give me statistics. Because Ambrosali University, that has become, a, that was a pride of Edo, has their intake from 15,000 has dropped to 2,500 because of bogus school fees and lack of infrastructure to manage their population. Uh, the University of Iyamu, the University of Iyamu that was built under Adam Sushomoli, they have not invested one couple in, into it. I challenge them, they should tell us how much they have invested. Mm. The, the, the university generated all internal revenue to run the other business because of the had been issue, said it was a misplaced priority. So when mm. you see this kind of scenario, they demolish, they demolish the state library and built a shop right. It's all so, about profit you know, and loss uh, businesses. Mr. Fekwa, you know, on Thursday, uh, yeah. Edo PDP spokesperson was telling me that um, the reason you members of APC say increased IGR but no money on the streets of Edo to show for it is because Governor Basaki is very meticulous with the fund of Edo people and he does not throw money around like like APC, like the APC administration. So that's the reason you people say uh, there is no money. But two issues before dear, we, we, we go sister, tonight. My, my dear sister, if in his own words, he's not sharing money to people, then we expect that the kind of projects that we should be seeing in Edo are projects that will be legacy projects for all to see. You know he has a commissioner for roads and bridges, but I don't think we have any bridge in those states. So you just give titles to people, set them on errands, and they can't perform. All right. Because you have strangulated them in terms of finances and even mm -hmm. responsibility to take decisions on their own. All right, Mr. Fegwa, we have limited time. So let me let me bring on to these two issues before we go tonight. Some have also said God Abbasaki okay. won the last election without a godfather and support from the center. So he will win this time without these enabling factors. So how, how challenging is this for the APC? And also that he now has a godson after several years of saying, deal with me if I become a political godfather. The second question, when Thank PDP you. talked about how unmarketable Mondi Okwebolo is, APC says uh, it takes, what it takes to be electable is beyond grammar. But realistically, the majority of the youths in Edo State who are mostly on social media are getting carried away by that grammar. Uh, Aswai Godalo speaks. I mean, they're getting away. Whoa. They're oh. getting yeah. carried away. Kindly yeah. hold on, Mr. Afegwa. They're getting carried away by that yeah. poise. I'm just wondering, what is Senator Monde Okwebolo saying to Edo young voters? Those are the two questions. Let me give you, I'll just give it, I'll just give you two scenarios. In the issue of Godfather Obaseki winning election in 2020, we knew what because he left the APC at that period, some of the governors of the APC just showed sentiments and sympathy for him, and so they worked work for him, including the, pres the former president, Muhammad Buhari. I can tell you that for free. That was happen. So he should use the criteria of 2020 to determine this one. Secondly, the candidate and the issue of those who are speaking English. Only recently, I started seeing Aswe Godalo speaking pidgin English, and I was asking somebody, why this man they speak pidgin? I should be the same as Queen's English in the speak. 
The average adult people communicate in pidgin language, and we are very profound in that. And because of that, even the, man, the woman selling fish in the market or who is trading understands his environment, her environment and can also take decisions based on happenings around her. The Mondo Pueblo does not speak BB grammar like those who are speaking grammar. Fine. But he came to, just last week here, I'll give you a scenario. He went to Jatu Market, where a tree fell on the market and killed two people, and about four or five people got wounded and they were hospitalized. He got there, visited those who were hospitalized, paid all their bills, and contributed 10 million naira to, to, the, to, to, the, to the rebuilding of that market. As we speak now, the, that process is ongoing. He left there, he passed through uh, Ekuma, and uh, he saw students protesting along the road because they were trying to make a case for one Mr. Ray, who was having challenges with respect to kidney. He needed six million to do a, a kidney plant, uh, a transplant. He didn't have to speak grammar. He called one of the representatives. He said, okay, calm down, calm down, let us address this issue. How much do you need? Say six million. Right there, right there on the spot, he transferred seven million to, to the student representative to go and take care of that man. This same uh, people who are speaking grammar passed through that place, they zoom off. They didn't stop. They went to the Jatu market, they didn't contribute a couple. Only the Labour Party candidate, Ulu uh, Akwata, contributed 2.5 million to the student who had a uh, kidney challenge. Uh, All right. went to Iduma, Iduma, Iduma Boke. Please let me finish this one. Uh, he went to Iduma, a community that had been out of electricity for seven years. He bought them seven decades the, uh, the transformer and also gave them 28 million naira to fix that electricity problem. As we speak, as we go to that village, is in darkness for the past seven years. And Wokimi, where he comes from. I challenge him to tell us whether he has fixed that electricity problem in a Wokimi. The road going to a Wokimi, apart from the one who simulated, the other one is, is an eyesore. Even the secondary school there, he, he can't fix it. The yeah, Eastern Security Network, when they said they should come and come, after Godaro contributed 100,000 naira. They said, come on, the board of transition, he said, no, he's too busy. One of the people 10 million and bought five Siena, fully kitted, that they are using to, 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 to attempt uh, vigilante in uh, Edo Central. So when you, you see a man who is performing, who is doing things, even as a private citizen, without being elected to position first, you are telling me that about grammar. Do you need grammar to tell you that there are potholes on the road that they need to be mm. or, or a man who right, builds business up to the point that they become multi-million business, multi-million dollar business, mm. eh? is the owner of Interweb and Satcom, and you are telling me such a person doesn't speak grammar? Is that not, is that, is, is that, is that, is that, is that, All right. I mean, interesting days ahead, and we'll be here to monitor these developments. But above all, all political parties in the Doe State must make sure there is peace in that state. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Kasim Afegwa, APC Chief Ting, thank, Political thank Affairs thank Analyst, as we discuss the sharpest defection and preparations ahead of the Edo governorship election. Thank you.